Good morning, good morning, good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. Love those songs, love that praise and worship. But today is kind of a special day. We've got a, some special friends here with us from Children's Cup. This is a missions that we are uh, partnering with, and we're so excited about what God's doing through this. And today we have uh, just a, uh, an amazing speaker, a uh, uh, friend of ours, Lee Chatham. Come on out. He, let's give him a hand real quick. We're so thankful that they are here with us, and he's going to share just a little bit about what Children's Cup is and, and how we're going to partner with them, and, and uh, just take it away, man. Yeah, perfect. Everybody doing good this morning? Hey, come on, before I uh, share about Children's Cup, my name is Lee, and my wife, Katie, beautiful wife, Katie, hello, beautiful, you, know, you got to say beautiful, you know, when God's blessed you way more than you deserve, you got to tell somebody sometimes, so, no, but me and my wife, uh, Katie, are here, we're both on the team here at Children's Cup. And uh, we came all the way from North Carolina, the East Coast, to hang out with you guys uh, today. But before I tell you about Children's Cup, I wanted to uh, kind of just even share a little bit more about, uh, about you guys and how incredible you guys are. How many of you know if um, the maybe more familiar you get with some things, maybe a relationship or, or how soon you're in a relationship series right now? So the closer you get, and maybe you spoke about this, the, the more familiar you get with something, maybe you lose sight of its significance. And can I tell you, from a guy who's coming all the way from North Carolina and get to spend a little bit of time here, that, uh, that maybe, maybe, have you ever moved into a new house or, or maybe you bought a house or, or whatever, and at first it became an incredible, it was an incredible uh, place you're proud of it, but the longer you get there, you start realizing like, eh, you, it loses its significance a little bit. You start thinking about the next one, the next, what we're going to do with the next house. I mean, you know, this is a little different, the next one. But can I tell you that somebody coming in, sometimes you need somebody to tell you that your house is good, that you, it's an incredible blessing to you, and this house is an incredible house. And so you've had, you got an incredible opportunity to be here. And so maybe it takes somebody from the outside to come in and say, this house is better than maybe even that you realize that it is. And so the house that you're sitting in right now, the bridge is, is an incredible place for you to get plugged in. And, and as a partner together at Children's Cup, I'll give you a little bit of the history history behind Children's Cup and then talk about uh, less about the history and more about the future of where we're going. And so we're a 31-year-old organization uh, at Children's Cup. We started in Africa um, 31 years ago. Just the idea, the goal to feed uh, two or 300 kids, and if that we could do that, that was going to be uh, the incredible opportunity that we had to do that. And now 31 years later, we're in six different countries, two in Africa and four in Latin and Central America, and we feed over 16,000 kids a day. And uh, our goal is uh, we really want to impact more than just food. How many of you can, you can fill uh, a stomach, but then uh, send them back into an, an incredibly difficult situation? And so we don't want to just feed people. We want to feed not just their body, but we have a, an idea. We want to feed mind, body, and spirit. And so, yes, physical feeding is a part of that, feeding people. But then we want to feed their spirit. We want to disciple and build uh, people up. And then we want to help uh, their, just not just their nutritional side, we want to help them succeed in every av avenue of life. And so we have these things in all of our, our countries. We have 64, I believe, um, and getting ready to add more next year, what we call care points. And those are just facilities where really it is exactly what it says. It's a point of care. And so you guys got to, are going to get a chance to partner with us in that. And so I actually had the opportunity to go to Belize, um, I believe it was last year, uh, with your pastors and had an incredible time. Uh, in Belize there. And so uh, the opportunity that we have for you guys is, is less about uh, of a uh, opportunity to, uh, to be just help Children's Cup, but it's more of an opportunity to engage. And so there's, there's a thing, a card in your seat there uh, that explains what Children's Cup is a little bit, but explains how you can get involved uh, there. But what I love is that it's not just a, a transactional kind of thing where we ask for you to become what we call a friend um, and there's, uh, there's uh, more information about that, but it's not just that. It's you guys have been talking about in your legacy offering of helping us uh, purchase some land in Belize to build a, another care point there. And so there's opportunities to engage at whatever level there is. And so maybe some of you, it is helping engage financially in that, in that way. Maybe some of you has become a friend there. But then what I, I love is that maybe it's an opportunity later in this year, you're going to opportunity to maybe engage by going and being a part and seeing uh, what's happening on the ground there in Belize. And so what I love is the fact that, is that it's really, this is what the Bible says, right? The Bible says to go and make disciples. It says to go into all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And what you're doing here in Missouri is your Judea and Samaria. And then you get to go now and engage into the ends of the earth. And you guys have done that in, in multiple different ways. But I love the opportunity that you guys get to go now as a family and go and be part of what's going on in Belize. And so um, stay with me here for a little bit. This is uh, like I'm from the East Coast, so I know more about hurricanes than I do earthquakes. But it's an analogy that I think is actually really good. Uh, the little bit that I paid attention in 
uh, our, our environmental science in high school. So we're going back to high school science here. But, um, but the whole idea of what I love about even just how you bring in scripture in to say, uh, to go to make disciples in, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth is that uh, what the idea is fascinating to me about earthquakes is that earthquakes, um, because again, being at the, the, on the East Coast, we don't get earthquakes. Um, we get hurricanes and ice and all the other fun stuff. But earthquakes, what happens is, is that it's felt uh, the, you know, the impact is far and it's reaching and it goes wide. But what happens is the epicenter, where it happens the most is where the most of the impact happens. And so maybe not on a destruction level, but on, the, on a good level is that what's happening here at the bridge, the center of that, what God's doing here is you're seeing the impact there, but it's going throughout and it's, it's reaching all the way into Belize. It's reaching to all the way to the ends of the earth. And so what you have, I don't want to lose significance. And what you're doing here is not just uh, changing Cape Girardeau, but it's changing to the world. And as we partner together to serve, because this is not a, uh, hey, come just, uh, you know, finance and resource children's cup, but this is a, let's come together, let's lock arms, let's partner together, let's go into Belize, let's go into the ends of the world to be able to show the love of Jesus and to be able to do that. So it's our opportunity, it's our privilege to be able to uh, partner with you guys, to become friends. That's what we say we love. Everyone needs a friend, and so we get to be friends now. So whether you like, how many of you know you got friends that you really don't even know why you're friends with, but now you're friends with me, and I get to be that friend that um, is like a brother uh, to you. And so uh, we get the opportunity to be friends uh, there. And then as we go into Belize, it's an incredible opportunity to see uh, as you walk into Guinea Grass, it'll feel like home. It'll feel like the bridge. It'll feel like, I, I can tell you, because I was there as soon as we walked into Guinea Grass, with Pastor Rocky and Pastor Laura, uh, it was immediately, I was like, nope, they, they might not leave. They, they might just become Bridge Belize, and you guys are going to find new pastors, but they're here, and, uh, but it's an incredible opportunity that we get. So I'm, I'm coming here not to, to pitch anything, but just to say simply thank you. Thank you that as you partner with uh, the bridge, as you give generously to the bridge, and as we partner together, we get to see lives changed all throughout Cape Girardeau, all throughout the United States, but even reaching into the ends of the world, into Belize. And so thank you again for what you're going to do. Me and my wife will be in the back if you guys have any questions um, about friendship, about Children's Cup, about, you know, just a question. You know, just don't let me stand there at the table. Uh, come and just ask a question. Uh, and we'd love to be able to engage and partner with you guys. So again, just thank you so much for what you're doing and allowing us to be here this morning. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. So... We want to just um, <clears throat> give Children's Cup something. This is something that's part of our legacy offering that we were able to do. We have, uh, when we were in Belize, we were able to go to Guinea Grass, see this vacant piece of property. They were renting, is that right? Yeah. They're renting right now a facility for this care point for these children to come across from the public schools or private schools to actually be fed because a lot of these children don't have food. They don't have resources. So... Uh, that's what this is about, is being able to give them a facility that they can call their own and be able to facilitate these kids, to give them a place to come to know Jesus, to find friends, to find food, to find these different things. So during our legacy season, which was in the fall at November, uh, December, we were able to raise $4,600 to be able to give to Children's Cup today to give this to them, to put as a down payment or a deposit yeah, for this property. So again, we want to thank you, Bridge Church, so much for your generosity of making a difference. And Lee, Katie, thank you guys so much for coming all the way from North Carolina. Can we give them a hand once again? Thank you, guys. <laughs> It's amazing to be able to put our, our resources together just outside of our community and just to see a difference that's made. I'm going to tell you all, we're, we're working on putting a missions trip together. I don't know if you know this yet or we've talked about it um, and, and we've shared this, but being able to send a team down in September of this year. So if you are interested in going to Belize on a missions trip to help facilitate, to help Children's Cup, to go down there and just to make a difference. I know sometimes you're like I was. I'm like, what, what can one person do or what can, what can one church do? But can I tell you, like he said, I loved how you put that, Lee, with, with the epicenter. That's where it starts. It starts with us. And if we can make a difference, take that challenge, take that step of faith. And, and I can tell you from myself, I like Cape Girardeau County, okay? I just do. And I like the surrounding area. And I don't ever have to leave here again the rest of my life. 
I'm very pleased with not going on these trips to going out of the country. I am not a world traveler. I am a world traveler because my wife wants to be a world traveler, and I married her, and I love her, and I want to go with her, and I want to help support her. But once I took the step into missions, we did a missions trip in Mexico several years ago, and when we took that opportunity, it was amazing just to be able to see a different culture, a different world, and to know that we can make a difference, even if it's one child at a time. So again, thank you all so much for being here, uh, to letting us partner with you, and what we can do to help Children's Cup. Can we give them a hand one more time? Let's give God the glory for it. So if that's something that, you know, maybe God's called you to, and you're like, "Ah, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can go to another country. I don't know. If we go as a team, I'm going to tell you it's going to be worth it. So I, I encourage you to pray. Just pray about it. Ask God, what would you have, what would he have you do? That's, that's my, my prayer always. God, what would you have me do? Do you want me to give? Do you want me to go? Do you want me to pray? Do you want me to do all three? And I think that's what we need to ask ourselves as we move forward. So, uh, again, it's so good to have them. And if you want some more information, they will be at the table over here in the back of the uh, sanctuary immediately after service. But uh, we're going to jump into today's message. I hope you guys are prepared for our finale of this series, uh, Relationship Goals. Um, my name is Pastor Rocky, in case I haven't got to meet you yet. We're so glad that you are here. If it's your first time at the Bridge Church, Bridge family, would you help me give all of our first-time guests a hand? Thank you so much for joining us. Got me a little out of my sorts this morning of our routine, so to speak, but I love it when we do that. If it is your first time, I would ask you, just do us the honor of filling out that connection card. Uh, fill out that QR code that's right there in the seat in front of you. We don't want to hound you or bug you or put you on an email list. We simply just want to send you a letter of what it shows to call the bridge home and what our vision is right here in Cape Girardeau because we believe that God gave us a purpose and a place for this time, and uh, we would love to connect with you. We've been in this series, Relationship Goals. Does anybody have relationship goals that maybe you want to further in your life? Maybe it's uh, marriage goals. Maybe it's just friendship goals. Maybe it's coworker goals. Maybe it's uh, uh, whatever it looks like in your relationships. And we've, we ask, why is there a series on relationships? Why do we have a series on relationships? Well, I can tell you, we need a series on relationships because they are very, very important. And not only are they very, very important, they are very, very complicated. Can I get an amen? You got any complicated relationships? Maybe you're living in one. Maybe you're walking in one. Maybe you're married to one. I didn't say that. I was just speaking it in faith. But there was a story I was reading as I was studying for this and was kind of uh, reading this story of two friends that were walking through the desert. And during their journey, they had gotten into an argument. Well, one of the friends got so mad at the other one, he turned around and slapped the other one right in the face. How would your response be if you were the one that just got slapped? So the one who got slapped was hurt, but without saying anything and not punching the other guy back in the face, he knelt down and wrote in the sand. And he wrote in the sand, today my best friend slapped me in the face. So they kept walking until they found an oasis where they decided to get into this cool uh, water to cool off, to clean up. And the one who had been slapped stepped into some quicksand and began to sink but his friend saved him from the sinking sand. After they recovered from the sinking sand and everybody was okay, he wrote on a stone, today, in a stone, today my best friend saved my life. The friend who had slapped and saved his best friend asked him, after I hurt you, you wrote in the sand, and now after I saved your life, you wrote in stone, why? Why? And the friend says, when someone hurts us, we should write it down in the sand where the winds of forgiveness can erase it always. But when someone does something good like save my life, we must engrave it in stone where there's no wind can ever erase it. My question today is, is in our friendships, 
Are they as sand or are they stone? We're so easy nowadays to just write someone off if they hurt our feelings or we get into a disagreement and we're just so quick to just write them away and say, well, they're just really not friends. Our theme verse for this message series tells us the goals that we should have in every relationship as families, as couples, as even friends. And today we're talking about friendship and friends. But it comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, if you have your Bibles. Verse 2 and 3 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Why are friendships important? Why is it that we have to have these relationships? Has anybody ever heard the old saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? If I asked you this morning to write down five of your closest friends, who would it be? Could you make that list in your head right now mentally? Who's your top five friends? Could you name them off if I was to come by and ask you? Did you know that you are the average of your five closest friends? So now that you have that list of your five closest friends... Would you like to rethink your list? Ask yourself this question. Do you want to become like the people on your list? Or would you want to be less like the people on your list? If you want a good marriage, are you hanging out with people who have good marriages? Are you hanging out with people that are talking about their spouse and trying to get away from their spouse with everything that they do? If you want to eat healthy and work out and be in shape, who's on your list encouraging that? Or who's that person that's always at the buffet? That's me. I'm not your closest friend in that area. You don't want to be like me. <clears throat> or maybe if you want to clo grow closer to God, are you putting yourself in positions with friends that are drawing closer to God? That's why we have these connect groups this is already, like Mark said in his message just a few weeks ago, these are built-in friends. If you don't have friends, we got friends for you. Just sign up for a group. We'll get you plugged in. Proverbs 13 and 20 says this, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools, what? Suffers harm. You do a lot of dumb things. Have you ever done some dumb things with your friends? Have you ever gotten trouble because of your friends? Oh, Lord Jesus, I've been in trouble before because of my friends. So I'm going to tell you a story about myself. I've never shared this story. There's only a few people in here that know about it, and that would be my mom and my dad, and that's because they had to pay for it. And so I was 18 years old, had a jacked up Bronco 2. Anybody know what a Bronco 2 is? Wow, those are like back in the day. I was actually looking at one just the other day on Facebook, and I was like, I should buy that. Do what I did to this one. It's all lifted at 35s on it. It was a five-speed, four-cylinder. It would go all of 25 miles an hour. It would barely turn the tires over, but it was fun. So, of course, hanging out in the big town of Metropolis, of Bullinger County, Marble Hill area, you know, we didn't have a whole lot to do. You couldn't go to the movies. You couldn't do anything. You just found fields that you could go and mud in the farmer's fields. And for some reason, I don't know why they didn't like it. I mean, we were just having fun, just enjoying ourselves. So we got a, uh, a hangout that we called the Lanes in Marble Hill back in the day. And so we'd all hang out there, and then we figured, okay, what are we going to do, guys? We can't just sit around here. This is boring. So we decided, all right, hey, my buddy's got a field over here. He said we could go mudding. It's been raining. It's says June, and, and it's perfect. So I'm like, yeah, let's rock and roll, man. Let's do this. So we take off. There's a whole line of us, probably seven trucks, four-wheel drives, two-wheel drives, people that thought they were four-wheel drive guys, and they weren't. They were just posers. And uh, so we cruise out into this field, and, 
And I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. It's a dead end road, by the way, because the bridge was out back in the day. It's out towards Leopoldo, and you know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> we, we ran out to this field, and all of a sudden, man, we're just tearing, slinging mud everywhere. And I mean, this is at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. So of course, you know, nothing good happens at that time of night, no more most of the time. And so we're, we're tearing this field all to pieces. I noticed there was a lot of green stuff sticking up about this tall. I didn't realize that that was actually beans that the guy had planted. So, I mean, we're trashing this field. And, I mean, you know, seven, eight trucks, we can tear up a lot of, a lot of ground. And all of a sudden, I just happened to notice, okay? I just happened to notice. Up on the hill, I seen headlights or porch lights come on, and then I seen headlights. And I'm like, this can't be good. So I take off. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be the first one out of here. I don't want to get caught in here. This just doesn't seem right. So I take off, and we're going down the gravel road, and all of a sudden I had to pop over a little railroad track, and just before I did, here comes the farmer's truck, and he comes in and sideways, shotgun in hand. I'm like, yep, got my attention. Yes, sir. There was a lot of yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir going on. Point being made, if I wouldn't have been around those friends, I probably wouldn't have been in this field in a situation where I had to answer to a man with a shotgun. So what my point is, have you ever been around someone that you're like, why did I do that? Why am I putting myself in that situation? Needless to say, I got away from the situation. Everything was okay at the moment. Well, one of the guys that was with us decided he needed to go back the next week and try it by himself. Got stuck, got the highway patrol called. Then he turned all of us in. That was that good friend of ours. Turned us in, and then my parents had to pay the bill for all the farmer's fields. So needless to say, be careful who your friends are. Be careful where you put yourself in that situation. On the flip side of getting in trouble, when you've been successful, when life is good, when you've done some good things, have you ever looked at the type of people that you are around that's helped you to get where you're at? Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for, for, well, I I was just lucky this, or, oh, I was just really good, or this is, I'm just really skilled. No, God puts people into your lives to help you through circumstances to get you in situations. That's why we have friendships. And maybe you're the friend to help someone else change and turn their life around. So how do you define a true friend? If you look at the dictionary's version of it, a friend is your buddy, your pal, your amigo, your comrade, Someone you trust and like enough to hang out on a regular basis. That's what a true friend is. That's what a friend is. Someone you like to hang around with. The Bible's version comes from Proverbs 17 and 17. It says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. The verse means that a true friend will love you no matter what. But when adversity, bad times come, they become as close as a brother or sister. They become like family. This is where your true friends stick around. When the money runs out, when the fame runs out, when everything else runs out, and you're at the bottom of your life and you're at the bottom of the barrel, that's where the true friend that sticks closer than a brother Research shows that the average American claims only two, two close friends. Did you know that 25 years ago, it was six? We had six close friends in our lives. What has changed? What has changed in the last 25 years? One in four says that they don't even have a close friend because of increasing work hours. With technology nowadays, we can have multiple jobs. We can spread ourselves so thin that we cannot have personal relationships with other real people. The divorce rate is rising to its highest. Explosion on social media. Social media. Because, well, I mean, social media, you you should be a supplement to friendship, not a replacement. How many knows that vitamins are good, but it doesn't really replace what vegetables are? do for your life. People can have more likes, more followers than ever, more comments, more social media status, yet they are experiencing more loneliness, more depression, 
and more unhappiness than ever before. So my question today, my challenge for all of us in 2024 in this relationship goals message series is to what? I want, I want to give you just two things. The first one is, if you want to write it down, show up. Just show up. Be present. Be there. When somebody says, hey, I'm having a barbecue, don't say, yeah, I just don't feel like it, or, oh, I don't feel good, or, I, I, you know what, it's, just, it's been a long day. I've been working too many hours. Show up. Be present. Jesus asked his disciples to follow him. What would they have said if it had been like, yeah, you know what, Jesus, I don't really have time today. Got to check my Instagram account, see if I got enough likes today. To travel together, to be with him. They had to be present in the moment. They had to be there. My question for all of us, are you available for your family? Are you available to your friends? How many of you, and don't raise your hand, and I don't really want to know. This is just for you to ask the question to yourself. How many of you are guilty at the dinner table of all being on the phone? If you're at the restaurant or maybe at your own dinner table, is it, are we guilty of checking our phones in the middle of dinner? This is something that we had to stop several years ago. It was like, just can't do this. Turn them over, put them away. Don't even bring them up there. I want you to read what we're supposed to be doing for one another from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. Let us think of ways to motivate, motivate one another to acts of love and good works. How can we motivate each other? That's what I'm hopefully doing for us today. I want to motivate you to do acts of love, to do good works. And then it goes on and says, and not let us neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. How many's heard, and we've, we've heard it, I've heard it most of my life, we're living in the last days. Have y'all ever heard that? I mean, I do believe that. I don't know how long that is, but I do believe that God could come back any day. He could come back for his church, for his bride any day. And I don't want to be distracted I don't want to be distracted on, on trying to be something or, or achieve something that's not going to really make a difference in my life eternally. But if I don't have close friends and close relationships and I can't cultivate those, I can't uh, uh, mature those, then what am I? What am I doing? What do you need to do to accomplish this goal, to show up? Is there changes in your life that you need to adjust? Maybe some tweaks in your, in your walk with God or, or maybe just in your family life or your friendships. Have you ever been, and I've been this person, so I can say this wholeheartedly, but have you ever been with someone, and, and I've, again, guilty of this, so I'm gonna talk about myself, but I've also been with someone that's done it. They've been on their phone, and we're scrolling and we're looking, whether you're buying something or you're Facebook stalking or you're, you're checking your own stuff to make sure that you are popular enough that people like you and, and you're scrolling through there and all of a sudden you're like doing this and you're staring into space scrolling on your phone. I've done this and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing that? It's because I'm so distracted about what is in the future, just like you said, Lee, that I can't even see what's present right here in the moment. I'm living for tomorrow so much that I miss what is today. And I, wanted, I don't want us to do that with our friendships. That's why we, we, we push so hard with these connect groups. We want to try to uh, uh, cultivate these friendships to create spaces that are safe, that are wholesome, that are going to give you the opportunity to know someone, to get to know someone that you don't know, and to maybe build a bond or a friendship that's going to last forever, that's going to be like those two that are walking through the desert. You may get into it every once in a while, but it's going to be solid. It's going to be written stone. It's going to be solid enough that it's going to stand the test of time. Show up physically, mentally. 
challenge yourself to put that phone on silent and face down. Because when you see that light, bing, it's like all of a sudden, I don't, I don't understand. I was laying in bed the other night and I, had, I usually turn my phone upside down. I had it on the right side up. And I was in the middle of a dead sleep and I seen a light come on. And the phone had come on. It was some kind of email. Of course, what did I have to do? Reach over there, knock half the stuff off the bedside table to see what's on my phone to see if it's important or not. Put your phone face down. Put it in a bucket. Leave it on the counter in the, in the living room before you go to bed. Make the people you are with, you are present with, a priority. Make them a priority in the moment. We're guilty about this in our marriages, I know. My wife and I, we used to fight about it all the time. She'd stand in front of the TV and act like that was going to make a difference for us to have an argument. It didn't work. But when I make up it in my own mind that, you know what, I need to put this down. I need to stop. I need to be present in the situation. So show up. Be present. Second thing, be real. People want real. There's enough fake stuff that I can, I can get all the fake stuff I want on my phone. I see it, all the, the filters, the ads, the stuff that they, they make up to try to make me laugh or they make up to try to make interesting and all the stuff that's on there is half of it staged anyways. But be real. Be true to who you are. God created you for a purpose in a perfect design. As weird and quirky as you are, it's perfect. Don't shy away from it. Don't run away from it. Now, that doesn't mean to make a spectacle of yourself either. But just be real. Be who you are. Say, this is just who I am. I'm just a redneck from way out in the country. I'm sorry, but that's just who God created me to be. Be open. Don't try to be something that you think someone else wants you to be. I remember when I first started preaching or I first started getting into ministry, I'd always watch all these other ministers. I'd be like, yeah, I need to be like him. Or, or, and then I, got, I was introduced to Chris Hodges into my life uh, about seven or eight years ago. And if anybody knows him, the pastor of Church of the Highlands in, in uh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, I'm like, yeah, I got to be like that guy. There's nobody on the earth like him. He's an anomaly. <laughs> but my point is, is we look up to people. That doesn't mean that I can't be challenged by him and do better for myself of what God's given me but I will never be like that person. Be who God created you to be. Be real. So why is, it, why is opening up to others important? Like being able to share who you really are. Because of what it says in James chapter 5, verse 16, confess your sins to each other and not spread them out to everybody. What does it say? Pray for each other so that you may be healed. How many knows when you're hurting, when there's things in your life that you don't know how you got there, what the circumstance was, but you're hurting and you want to share and you want to open up to someone, but you don't have that friendship, you don't have that connection. It makes it very hard because we do not want to be vulnerable. Being strong looks good. I'm tough. I'm a guy. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anybody's opinion. I got this. I can figure it out on my own. That's the way we feel. But when we make real connections, real friendships, we are able to share our weaknesses. Because can I tell you, every one of you are weak in some area in your life. And where you're weak, I may be strong. And where I'm weak, you may be strong. And we should be able to feed and help each other to grow from that. That's how we are healed. And we are all, we're all able to be vulnerable when 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 we're able to open up. That's not being weak. When you're vulnerable, when you're sharing your heart, and you're like, man, I can't do this anymore. I'm so ready to quit on my friendships, on my marriage, on my life, on whatever it is. I want you to understand being vulnerable, being able to open up is going to help you heal that process. But that's being real with yourself and with your friends. It's when we are real and admit our fears, our problems, our mistakes. That's when we can connect and others 
can say, you know what, I feel the same thing. You'd be surprised how many people that are sitting in this room side by side you that are going through very similar things and we are just holding it in. Now, I'm not saying you air out your dirty laundry. I'm not saying you pull all the skeletons out of your closet the first day. But I'm saying that when you have true friendships and true relationships, you're able to open up. You'll be able to allow God to come in to minister in those areas to say, you know what? We got this. We can do this together. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Keep walking. One step in front of the other. The greatest part about sharing Jesus has been when I've been able to admit my mistakes, to say that I've messed up, and look what God did for me. Look how he brought me through this. And if he did it for me, I can assure you he can do it for you. Whatever you're going through, can I tell you, just turn, turn to him. We were not created to be independent. You're like, what? You heard me. We are not created to be independent. I know as, as culture tells us and your parents told you, you need to be independent and get out of my house. My parents didn't tell me that. I figured it out on my own. But we are not created to be independent. We are all created to be dependent on God. Every one of us. And our dependence on him makes us dependent on one another because he is living within us. When we pray for help, he doesn't just wave this magic wand and and everything's all better. You know what he does? He sends someone into your life. He sends someone into your life. So that person that maybe shows up out of the middle of nowhere, or maybe you're here for the first time, and you're like, I don't even know why I'm here. I don't. You are here for a design and for a purpose today. I believe that with my whole heart. There is something more that God has created you for, and it's allowing us to find that and to step into that. So as you pray today, and as we close out today's service, I want you to consider your friends. Are they who you want to be like? Are your closest friends challenging you in a good way? Are they pulling you away from what you know that God's called you to do? Maybe you couldn't even think of a friend to put down as a true friend. Not only does God want you to be, uh, to have friends, to have meaningful relationships, but more than anything, God wants to be your friend. He wants to be in relationship with you. That's the vision of this church for me is to to give you an opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus Christ because here's the the bottom line is, is I have the power to save this many people. I can't save a soul in here, but I know the one that can, and I know the one that wants to, and all he's waiting on is you. He's waiting for you to take that step. So this morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, would you just do this this morning? I want to I give you an opportunity to make a decision, and nobody's looking around, and, and we're not going to come back to where you are or, or have you come up here, nothing, nothing awkward or weird. But simply right now, if you don't know Jesus this morning, if you've never had an experience with him, when I count to three, I just simply want you to slip your hand up and just say, that's me. Again, we're not going to come back to you. So I want you to do this with boldness. I want you to do this with the heart that God's given you because he's calling you. He's, He's reaching out to you in this place this morning. Because the Bible says what separates us from the relationship with Jesus is a simple thing, and it's sin. And the Bible says that we were all born into sin, every one of us. And there's only one way that that can be done, and that's through the death of Jesus Christ. And that's why he died for each of us, to carry that sin. He paid the bill. He paid the bill for you, for I. So this morning, if you're ready to begin that relationship, it begins by showing up. It begins by being real 
with him, confessing what Romans 3 and 23 says, that the Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and that God raised him from the dead to give each of us a new life. So if that's you this morning, and you're ready, on the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Just say, that's me. I need a friend in Jesus. I need a Savior. Thank you this morning. If you raised your hand or maybe you need to give your life back to God this morning. Maybe you're not where you should be and you've strayed from Him. We can all say this prayer. It's not going to hurt us. But just say, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new today. Because of your word, it tells me. I turn to you. I trust in you to be the Savior of my life, to be my Lord. God, be my friend. And let me be the reflection of your love. Thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And I ask you to be with me for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to pray in this place this morning, I want to encourage you to respond to what God, what the spirits may be speaking to you. As you stand with me, I would ask that you would consider Consider if you are investing in friendships like you should. And with who? With who you should be investing your friendships with. So as we continue to pray and they play softly this morning, there's a few ways that you can do that. We have communion set over, set up in the left of the uh, sanctuary here. If you need to reflect back, you're welcome to take communion. If you need prayer, Prayer partners will be to my left and I'll be over to my right. If you just need somebody to stand in prayer with you, to pray over you, to pray with you, maybe you want to come up to the front and just pray on your own. Nobody's going to bother you. Pray at your seat. Maybe there's a prayer card that you need to write something down. There's prayer cards at each side of the stage here. But I would ask this of all of us today, just like we do every Sunday. Ask, God, what are you speaking to me? What would you have me do? That's my question to him every day. In Jesus' name. Thanks for listening to today's message. We pray that it strengthened, encouraged, and empowered you. We would love to connect with you. So if you have questions, need prayer, or simply want to let us know how this message has helped you, please send an email to info at To stay up to date with all the events at The Bridge, follow us on Facebook and Instagram.